And at number 10, fake relationships. I think at this point it's clear that most Hollywood relationships are faked for PR. Occasionally these fake relationships actually turn into real love, but most of the time these fake couples split as soon as the movie comes out, making it painfully obvious. One of the most obvious cases of this was the on and off again relationship between Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart during the Twilight days. These two would always be in a relationship when their newest movies were dropping, but then a few weeks after the release, they would break up. Since they split almost immediately after the final Breaking Dawn movie was released, it's clear that it was all a lie. Also, the pair looked so uncomfortable when they were together, and now that we see what they look like in a happy relationship, it's clear that they weren't in one. And at number 9, Paid Paparazzi. If you've ever wondered why some celebrities look amazing in paparazzi photos, well, others don't, it's because a lot of celebrities hire their own paparazzi to make sure they never look bad in a photo. The most recent celebrity to get called out for using this tactic was Addison Rae. While Addison was out in New York, she happened to get a ton of great photos of herself out and about in the city, and Page Six called her out for tipping off the paparazzi about her location so she can get a ton of good pictures. Page Six called it, quote, a move straight out of the introductory course at the Kardashian Institute of Advanced Fame Grasp. Apparently, Addison specifically wanted good photos of her outfits so that she could become known for her style. This move has long been used by the Kardashians back when they were up and coming, and now it seems that Addison is taking tips from her new friends. And at number 8, Fake Bodies. It's no secret that almost everyone in Hollywood has had some work done. Usually it's minor things like Botox and fillers to maintain youthfulness, but some celebrities went through major changes before making it big, and these cosmetic procedures were the reason that it all happened. Apparently it's an open secret that celebrities will change their bodies to adapt to the times to maintain marketability. But the worst part is that most celebrities don't own up to these big changes, so fans will think these people are effortlessly perfect and it starts to impact the everyday person's self esteem. One of the most common procedures seems to be a nose job, and most celebrities Celebrities that are deemed au naturel have had it done. Blake Lively, Scarlett Johansson, and Jennifer Aniston are just some of the celebrities that fans are convinced had nose jobs, but they will never admit it to fans who think it's all elite genetics. In a number seven, award show corruption. Many fans assume that Oscars and Grammys are given to those who truly deserve it, but once you pull back the curtain, that's really not how it works. And an open secret is that anyone who wants to win one of these awards must campaign for it and basically bribe the judges. This can be in the form of actual money, or things like vacations and expensive gifts. Back in 1981, actress Pia Zandora won the Best Newcomer Award for her role in the movie Butterfly. It was a shock to everyone, until it was exposed that her husband paid off the voting members to ensure that she won, and over time the practice did not get better. In 2011, publicist Michael Russell sued the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for firing him. He was trying to expose the corruption with the award show, and they didn't like that. The party settled the dispute out of court. And at number 6, cheating. Movies often take months to film. That's long, grueling hours away from family and friends, stuck with the small same group of people. Because of how it all works, movie sets are breeding grounds for extramarital affairs, especially if you're spending a lot of time with your love interest in the movie that you're hugging and kissing all day on set. There are truly too many examples to name, but there's a solid chance that one of your favorite actors cheated on their spouse during the filming of a hit movie. The most famous are Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Kristen Stewart and director Rupert Sanders during the filming of their project. And obviously, this this happens a lot more than it's reported. Halfway number 5, Fake Names the vast majority of Hollywood A-listers do not use their real names, instead they concocted a stage name. This is done for a variety of reasons, sometimes just because their old name isn't as flashy, but other times the reasons are pretty dark. For some examples of celebrities with fake names, Martin Sheen's real name is Raymond Antonio Gerard Estevez, Jamie Foxx's name is Eric Marlon Bishop, and Marilyn Monroe's real name was Norma Jean Mortensen. Then other times a name change can be used to hide nepotism. Like for instance, Nicolas Cage's real name is Nicolas Coppola, and he's the nephew of Francis Ford Coppola, a famous Hollywood director. This familial connection landed Nick Cage his first role in the movie, Peggy Sue Got Married. Other times, a name change can be to hide racism. Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. actor Chloe Bennett, real name Chloe Wang, said, quote, Hollywood is racist and wouldn't cast me with the last name that made them uncomfortable. In at number 4, stuntmen regularly lose their lives. Stuntmen are a very common thing on movie sets, because A-list actors aren't able to do the stunts that we see in a lot of action movies. But fans might not know what a dangerous job that it is. 
is, and stuntmen regularly get critically injured or even lose their lives. And for how vital their role is to these movies, they are not paid fairly. The average stunt person pulls in about 250k a year, which sounds great, but is nothing compared to the about 20 million dollars that the movie stars are making. Big name stars are obviously the ones that sell the tickets, but they're not the ones who put their lives on the line. During the filming of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double David Holmes got hit by a staged explosion, and he was so seriously injured by the fragments that he suffered a neck break that left him fully paralyzed. Then on the set of Deadpool 2, a stuntman lost their life during a car crash scene. In a number 3, Substance Misuse. Following the release of the biopic Judy, we got to see the horrible practices the movie execs would use to get their talent to do what they wanted, specifically using illicit substances to wake the actors up and keep them on set working for very long hours. According to a 1982 New York Times article, use of these substances became so common that movie insurers would put clauses in their contracts to cut losses from these sorts of incidents, because several deaths and injuries on set stem from the use of these substances. In her 2013 memoir, Debbie Reynolds, the female lead for the 1952 musical Singing in the rain, recall that when her grueling schedule started to take a toll on her health, a studio executive told her to quote, take vitamin shots from his doctor. Then Judy Garland revealed her mother would give her quote, pep pills to ensure she had enough energy to film all day. Because of the toll these substances took on her health, Judy unfortunately passed away at the age of 47 because of an OD from these substances. In at number 2, inappropriate behavior runs rampant. So I'm gonna have to dance around the subject a bit for this one, but the things that have been exposed during the Me Too and Time's Up era are not new and have been happening for decades. Harvey Weinstein wasn't the first and only power player in Hollywood to use his power to get women to do what he wanted. And this all goes back to the idea of the quote casting couch, where you are expected to do sexual favors to these executives in exchange for a role. And there are many examples of this behavior taking place in Hollywood. Even worse, this behavior can also happen against ch one study even found that 94% of women employed in the American film industry have experienced sexual harassment or worse. This is a staggering number that should make everyone push for change. And finally, number one, discrimination problem. The problem of diversity in Hollywood is something that's being brought up more and more over the years. And when we look at some of the stats, it's pretty wild. Only one woman has ever won the Oscar for Best Director, and that was Catherine Bigelow for the 2008 movie The Hurt Locker. Also, only one African American has ever won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay in the history of the Academy, that was Jordan Peele in 2018 for Get Out. But the problem is not only in the cast and crew of the movies, it's the higher up of the business in general. A 2016 Washington Post investigation reported that 96% of Hollywood's decision makers were white and 87% of them were male. Clearly a large gap between those demographics and what we see in society today. A study of 100 movies released in 2016 also showed that about 70% of speaking roles in that year's top 100 films were white, leaving 30% to account for black, Asian, and Hispanic people. Another shocking stat was that just 31% of speaking characters were female. Percent, Chadwick Boseman. The late, great Chadwick Boseman was not just an incredible performer, but an incredible man. In his early years of acting, no matter what his status was, he was always vocal about the things that he did not agree with or understand. During a commencement speech to the graduating class of 2018 at his alma mater, Howard University, he spoke about a time when he was fired from a show for questioning the producers about the stereotypical depiction of his character. At first he was excited, as he was promised a six-figure contract, more money than he'd ever seen in his life. However, the moment he saw the role that he was playing, he was conflicted. The role was wrapped up in assumptions about people of color. He said that the character was just a young man with a violent streak pulled into the allure of gangs and with zero glimpse of positivity or talent in the character. After filming a handful of episodes, Chadwick brought his concerns to the attention of the producers who told him that they were very pleased with his performance, a performance that he was actually fired from the next day. Apparently, the things that he was asking caught the producers off guard. The conversation over the character actually came up when he was called into the production office, and they were very happy with what he'd been doing on the show, and it was clear they wanted him around for a long time. But when they asked him if he needed anything to be more comfortable, it was his opening. He asked them if they could just discuss his character a bit for plot purposes, asking them only two questions. Where is my father? And if my mother is not equipped to be a good parent, why did myself and my brother need to go to foster care? While the producers did have answers, when Chadwick asked if they felt that he was a stereotypical character at all, the producers stared for a moment before suggesting that he speak to the writers if he had any suggestions. The goal was to give his character a new lease on life, but the next day, he was fired for speaking his mind, something he has never regretted once and that never stopped him from pursuing his dreams. Number 9. Sylvester Stallone 
Considering the success of the Beverly Hills Cop franchise, it's difficult to imagine anyone else in the leading role of Alex Foley other than Eddie Murphy. But it turns out that at the time, the role was initially offered to one of the biggest stars of the 1980s, Sylvester Stallone. What's funny still is that at the time, he was not just a skilled actor, but earning an Oscar nomination for Best Original Screenplay for Rocky. But it seems that Rocky and the studio didn't really agree on many things, and eventually Stallone was exited from the project. One of the first major changes in Sly's version of the script was the violence. He wanted it to be ramped up to 100 and make it a real action movie. But the film was presented to him as a comedy. Even though he agreed to do it, he wanted to make some changes before the cameras rolled. He was exclusively told not to change anything about the film, but he insisted and re wrote the project as a 50-50 action comedy movie. When he presented the changes to the producers, they were not pleased with his script, in fact, quite the opposite. It was quickly decided that Sylvester would be let go as the lead and Eddie Murphy would be brought in to fill in the blanks. It was not in vain as he took that mangled script, incorporated elements of the novel Fair Game by Paula Gosling, and eventually it became the 1986 film Cobra. Although it wasn't loved by critics, it did go on to make around $160 million globally, which pretty good at the time. Number eight, Edward Norton. Three-time Academy Award nominee Edward Norton has been the leading man in many memorable movies. Primal Fear, American History X, and of course the most famous one, but as we all know, but of course, one of his most famous and mainstream roles was in the 2008 MCU flick, The Incredible Hulk. Although the movie was not a massive success at first, the audience was shocked when Edward Norton was replaced by Mark Ruffalo in the first Avengers film. The president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, said that the decision was not monetary, but it was actually due to the company wishing to hire an actor who embodied the creativity and collaboration that the other Marvel stars had so far shown on their projects. After Kevin made these statements, However, Norton was amicable but adamant about splitting ways with Marvel and mentioned that his roles in Birdman and Moonrise Kingdom would oppose the loud and extravagant role that he had in the MCU. Many believe that his calm response may be because he was paid handsomely before he was let go as a little bit of hush money. Marvel is good at hiding secrets, especially from their actors, but it was still so early in the MCU that Edward was certainly aware of hidden details and events that would make him a liability in the industry. Number seven, Colin Firth. The live-action Paddington movies are surprisingly very popular. The series, based on the children's book, has really hit home for a lot of people. The first and second film are currently rated at 97% and 99% fresh, respectively. 99. The success of the film can of course be attributed to the incredible cast, including the voice of Paddington, Ben Wishaw. But of course, Ben was not the first voice that had been recorded for the role. Initially, the voice of Paddington was done by Kingsman star Colin Firth. I know he's been in other things, but I love those movies and that's how I know him best. Not only did Colin record all of the lines start to finish, but he was not told that he was being replaced until a couple of months before the premiere. In some of the first promotional videos for the film, the animated bear never does anything more than grunt. It turns out that the creative team felt Colin's voice just didn't match with the vibe that they were going for. It made Paddington sound too old and distinguished when he needed to be some fresh young thing. Yeah, he was just happy to be working. Now let's get into some more dark Hollywood backstories, shall we? Number six, Jim Carrey's Origins. A Canadian legend, Jim is considered one of the greatest modern comedians of all time, famously releasing three films in the year 1995, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, and Ace Ventura, which all made millions at the box office, and still hold up to this day. As many know, comedians tend to have a pretty rough backstory as the best comedy comes from a place of pain. Over the years, Jim has come clean about his strange but fun upbringing. His family struggled financially, and he grew up watching his mother struggle with depression, which he claims to have passed down to him. Despite his energy, he was a bit of a recluse growing up and apparently spent hours in his room making faces in the mirror instead of hanging out with him. After dropping out of high school to work a full-time job, Jim and his family were forced to live in a Volkswagen van together, becoming homeless for a short period of time. He went on to attempt a career in comedy at first to minimal success, but of course he was able to find his footing and made his place in comedy history. Number five. Woody Harrelson's father. Woody is best known in Hollywood as the wildest wild child to ever exist. He eats raw meat, he's an eco-crusader, a protester against violence, and an advocate for the legalization of herbs and spices in the United States. He's loved on screen, but did you know that his father took people out for money? And I'm not talking about on dates. Charles Harrelson was sentenced to two lifetime sentences for the first, the slaying of a federal judge in San Antonio. 
Prior to that charge, Charles had previously been acquitted for the slaying of Alan Berg, a carpet salesman, and convicted of the slaying of Sam DeGalia Jr. Yeah, the evidence shows that Charles was not a great Woody doesn't speak much of his father these days, opting to instead leave his family troubles in the past. He does, however, say that the one thing that his father said to him that he still uses to this day was, always keep an open mind. Yeah, Charles knew all about opening minds. You can't put that in the video, that's just for the editor. I just did. Number four, Mark Wahlberg should be in jail. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch hit the rap scene in 1991. Despite sounding like the title of a cheesy kids show, the crew had a small following and garnered a lot of success, enough for leading man Mark Wahlberg to be spotted and picked up by Hollywood to star in The Corrupter, a 1999 action flick that sees Mark playing the leading man. Action by the numbers, kinda get it. He's had a successful acting career that has recently been declining in quality, but he's still acting and looks jacked at the age of 50-something. So please don't hurt me, Mark Wahlberg. Infinite was just hard to watch. Growing up in Boston, he was the youngest of nine children and was relentlessly bullied by his fellow siblings. His parents divorced when he was very young, and he became addicted to no-no snow by the age of 13. He dropped out of high school and was eventually arrested when he was 18 for attempting to slay two Vietnamese men. Apparently, he was just walking home late one night under the influence of a hallucinogen narcotic that I won't get into, when he spotted the men. Close friends at the time confirmed that Mark had a racial biased upbringing, which caused him to be instantly aggressive towards anyone who you know, wasn't white. He attempted to swing a large log at them, which made contact and knocked one of them unconscious, and he was eventually released after serving only 45 days of his two-year prison sentence and he vowed to change his life. So far, he's kept that promise. I can personally confirm that he's very polite and patient because he actually watched a movie at a theater I used to work at. He travels with a crew of five people at all times. It's a little intimidating. Number three, Tim Allen's hobbies. Tim Allen is the voice of Buzz Lightyear and the star of ABC's sitcom Home Improvement, which premiered in 1991. Now, while he may have played a family man on TV, many fans may not know that Tim was a smuggler of no-no snow in the early 1970s. According to Tim, he got mixed up with some bad people back in the day while he was selling certain substances on the street for a couple of bucks. In 1978, Tim was arrested in the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport, that's an awesome name, and was caught with more than 650 grams, 1.4 pounds of no-no snow. Unfortunately for Tim, state legislators had just passed a law that tied a life sentence to any conviction of selling 650 or more, like, as he was being arrested, there was a guy in his car like, okay, and if you have six, how many? 650 grams. Okay, yeah, you're a goner, Tim. However, that sentence was never served, as it was revealed that Tim was set up by an undercover police officer who had been following him for months. Due to this and Tim's cooperation in providing the names of fellow dealers to the authorities led to him receiving a lighter conviction that allowed him to be sentenced in a federal court instead of a state one, being able to ignore that new policy altogether. His information led to 20 arrests and the sentencing of a major dealer. That needs to be a movie. Number two, they have backups. There have been many rumors over the years that Hollywood likes to clone their best and brightest on the off chance that they will need them again following an untimely demise. According to the internet, Paul Rudd actually got to star alongside his clone in the show Living With Yourself, not some CGI thing. Now, Paul has, of course, claimed the performance was achieved with CGI and filming one character one day and another the next, but come on, Paul Rudd's also 54 and looks, well, like that. Something's not right about that. Now, there is a theory out there that celebrities are made up of lizard people who take the forms of actors and singers to influence people. Paul is thought to be one of those lizard people. I don't know, I don't believe this theory. I'm just sharing some stuff I found on the internet. Just, I don't believe any of this, okay? I'm just, this is fun. It would be awesome if there were two Paul Rudds though. In fact, that would probably be the most chill way to find out that clones existed. Just two Pauls being like, hi, I'm Paul. And another one being like, hi, I'm Paul. And everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Number one, they're all broke. That's right, despite it being one of the most lucrative industries in the world, most of Hollywood actors, writers, directors, all of them are not as well off as people may think. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last little bit, most of Hollywood was closed for a while as its staff were on strike. Some of the toppest of tier actors joined the crew in solidarity, and they are actually still on strike right now. Not stopping until Hollywood's producers and big budget studios start sharing the money they make. Actor Sean Gunn gave an interview a few weeks ago where he mentioned working on a show currently streaming on Netflix. 
a show that has made over $4 million in residuals, of which he has received basically nothing. This type of financial woe extends to a ton of people in Hollywood. Just wanted to take a moment to wish luck to anyone who's still out there, and hey, awesome that the writer part of the strike is over. That's pretty sick. In the number 10, Mafia Connections. Back when Hollywood first started, it was rumored that mobster Mickey Cohen ran the Hollywood underworld. Back in 1950, it was apparently a known thing that Cohen ran many organized crime units in LA. And over the years, it's been revealed that a lot of big old Hollywood stars had connections to the Mafia. Even singer Wayne Newton had a connection to the Mafia, and it almost ended up costing his life. Newton was apparently friendly with Guido Panossi, who was a member of the Gambino crime family. But Newton claimed he had no idea that he had mob ties. Then in 1980, there was a lot of scandal around Newton and the Aladdin Hotel that was co-owned with Mafia members. Rumors swirled that Newton was talking to police behind their backs. Then Newton was put on a witness list to testify against the family, which got him a legitimate threat against his life from the Mafia. Thank God he was able to survive the ordeal. And at number 9, Ageism Getting older is a fact of life, but in Hollywood they want to avoid it at all costs. And specifically for women, getting older means the end of your career. It's so bad that actors even try to hide their ages, so they can play younger roles. Actress Junie Hoang sued the website Internet Movie Database for revealing her true age to fans. Actress Jessica Lange has defied this ageism and has success in her 60s, but she admits it was more difficult as she got older. She said in one interview, quote, ageism is pervasive in this industry. It's not a level playing field. You don't often see women in their 60s playing romantic leads, yet you will see men in their 60s playing romantic leads with co-stars who are decades younger. In at number 8, Fake Fans In the age of social media, followers are everything, and having tons of followers can mean the difference between getting the part or not. But sadly, a lot of these followers are not real, and it's been exposed that millions of social media followers are fake and are purchased to make it seem like the star is more popular. Some of the world's most popular celebrities are a part of this. Some of the worst offenders are Ariana Grande with 46% fake, Taylor Swift with also 46% fake, and Miley Cyrus with 45% fake. It's worth noting that the celebrity is not always responsible for the fake followers, but they usually are. In at number 7, all press is good press. We've all heard the famous saying, and it seems that celebrities don't care if they are getting good or bad press, they just want to be talked about. People might not know it's actually a PR strategy to get bad press. Sometimes the negativity helps to sell something, or it can take attention off something else. One example of this was back in 2014, when it was revealed that Kim and Kanye were going to be on the cover of Vogue. At the time, Kim was not a fashion icon, and people were outraged. Some readers even threatened to cancel their Vogue subscriptions, calling Kim a disgraceful and inappropriate for the iconic publication. Anna Wintour ended up going forward with the cover, and it was one of the most talked about issues of all time. We're not sure if it was all for press, but the negativity definitely helped to sell magazines. And at number 6, Body Issues Looking perfect is something that all celebrities struggle with, but having the perfect figure is sadly something that the industry forces you to have to be successful. Many celebrities have come forward to share their stories of disordered eating, which was caused by Hollywood bigwigs saying that they weighed too much. Even agents and managers have told a star that they need to lose weight in order to be cast. Former child actor Raven Simone admitted on The View that she was told at age 7 Seven, while starring on The Cosby Show that she couldn't eat certain things because she was getting too big. This experience caused her to have a lifelong struggle with food. Demi Lovato has also been open about their eating issues. Demi remembered that when they were only 3 years old, they hoped that their stomach was flat. People are now fighting back against these standards and advocating for more body positivity in Hollywood, but it's a long road ahead. Half point number 5, Scientology Scientology is a mysterious religion that happens to have a ton of A-list celebrity followers. It's been said that the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, used celebrities because he knew that they would attract followers to this new religion. This is also the reason that the Church of Scientology has a huge luxurious building right on Hollywood Boulevard. In the 1950s, L. Ron Hubbard created the quote, Project Celebrity, a written program that offers rewards to Scientologists who bring in some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Today, some of Hollywood's biggest stars follow Scientology, including Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and Christy Alley. Apparently, these stars are rewarded with Butler-esque employees to do anything and everything for them. Former high-ranking members spoke out against this, claiming that they saw Tom Cruise use underpaid Scientology workers for years. 
And at number 4, gender pay gap. Yet another example of Hollywood being harmful to women is the gender pay gap between men and women in movies. And unfortunately, this still exists to this day. This issue came to the forefront in 2013 when the movie American Hustle was released. The movie showcases huge movie stars, but unfortunately was exposed that the female actors received less than their male counterparts. An email hack revealed that Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Adams received two points less on the revenue sharing agreement than their male co-stars Bradley Cooper and Christian Bale, despite the fact that both actresses are A-list actors. Around the same time, Meryl Streep, the actor with the most Oscars ever, came forward to say that even she was paid less than her male co-stars. House of Cards actress Robin Wright also said that she needed to be paid as much as Kevin Spacey or she would go public against Netflix. And at number 3, Animal Cruelty When making a movie, it's imperative that nobody is hurt during the production. This includes animals, and it's common to read, quote, no animals were harmed during the making of while watching a movie. But according to many reports out of Hollywood, that's not always true, and animals are often harmed on movie sets. Some of the worst examples include the near-drowning death of a tiger during the filming of Life of Pi, the hitting of a dog on the set of Eight Below, and the dozens of dead fish and squid that washed up on the shore over four days during filming of the Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. The second season of the HBO series Luck was actually cancelled after four horses died during the production. Apparently, they were overworked because the production wanted the horse racing to look as real as possible. The people on set also ignored warnings from humane animal monitors on the set, making it clear that they didn't care about the animals. Unfortunately, this loss of life had no repercussion. In at number 2, Hollywood Fixers It's long been rumored that bigwigs in Hollywood will hire fixers to do the dirty work for them. These are basically tough guys that will swoop in and do the dirty work that these powerful people can't get caught doing themselves. This idea was brought up again because of the series Ray Donovan. Back in the days of old Hollywood, where stars would sign their lives away to movie studios, it was common to have these fixers to deal with personal issues. It was rumored that these men would cover up pregnancies of their young stars, along with making accusations against powerful men go away. And these practices still happen today. A fixer named Anthony Pelicano was arrested after it was discovered that he sent threatening notes to celebrities along with a dead fish. Pelicano was allegedly employed by stars such as Michael Jackson, Chris Rock, Kevin Costner, and Steven Spielberg. And finally, at number one, the Illuminati. The Illuminati might be the most elusive group in Hollywood. Nobody is quite sure who they are, but everyone is pretty sure that some of the top celebrities in the world are a part of it. Most notably, Beyonce, Jay Z, Tom Hanks, and Lady Gaga. The subject of the Illuminati was brought to light again recently after David Dobrik did a podcast interview where he spoke about his experience with the Illuminati in Hollywood. He told the story to Zayn and Heath on their podcast where David revealed that a girl that he knew was approached by the Illuminati, and she was told she needed to sacrifice someone to them if she wanted to get famous. Apparently, this girl called her mother, who was okay to be the one sacrificed, but the girl did not end up going through with it. Months later, David and this girl were at a Hollywood party with old Hollywood A-listers. And when the topic of the Illuminati came up, the girl told the group about how she was approached and one of the A-listers told her not to get involved with them because the Illuminati ruined his best friend's life. Apparently, this A-lister's supposed best friend was Michael Jackson. Number 10, Tom Cruise's Cookie Dough. Tom Cruise is known to have a bit of a bad temper. According to Leah Romini, Tom once lashed out at his assistants after he couldn't find a tube of cookie dough when Leah and her husband Angelo were over for a visit. She claims that Tom asked his assistants to prep the cookie dough, and when he walked into the kitchen a few minutes later to find no cookie dough waiting for him, he flipped. Tom went off at his flustered assistant, grabbing a science book, holding it above his head, and telling the assistant, <clears throat> El Ron Hubbard is here, Dave and I are here, and you are down here. According to Leah, the assistant had the fear of God put inside of them because they knew what was about to happen. Romani diffused the situation by casually pointing out that the cookie dough was behind Tom on the counter the entire time. Tom is known for his temper. A former assistant revealed that when Tom turned 19, he threw a book at her head because the book was a bunch of Teen Beat style articles written about him when he considered himself an adult. The search associated with Tom has claimed that this never happened and is just a story for Leah's book, but the assistants and Leah's husband were eyewitnesses, so nice try, science guy. Number nine. 
nine, bad parents. A large chunk of Lee Romini's book is dedicated to exposing Tom Cruise and his role in the scientific community. Apart from cookie dough, freakouts, and secret meetings, she mentions how terrible of a parent he really was. Tom and his ex Katie had their marriage after their daughter Suri was born, and in her book she speaks of their wedding day, where she discovered baby Suri on a tile floor surrounded by three women, including Tom's sister and his assistant. She was crying very loudly, and Leah claims that the women were speaking to her as if they were trying to calm down an angry and annoyed adult. Neither Katie nor Tom were anywhere to be seen when this happened, leaving a lot of people to question if Tom is even a good dad. We know he isn't these days, at least according to online sources and his family, but seems like Tom hasn't seen Surrey in years. Number eight, Sharon Osbourne. Sharon and Leah had a very bad public feud a few years back, but according to Leah, things are okay now. The two were co-hosts on the show The Talk, but Leah was let go following the very first season in 2011. At the time, Leah blamed Sharon Osbourne for the firing as they had apparently had an altercation off camera. Leah called Sharon out for supposedly using racist language when speaking in reference to a crew member, but Sharon claims that never happened. Leah said that at the time she believed Sharon was her friend, and because of that title expected a lot from the co host. The story was backed up by several co-hosts and more details were released. She had apparently been using some very poor words when speaking about her co-hosts Julie Chen and Sarah Gilbert. I will not repeat what she said because it is so rude and vile and just no. Leah also revealed that at times Sharon would even use slurs aimed at her that were usually associated with Italian people. When Romini would not support Sharon, she used the power behind the scenes to take Romini out for good. Number seven, John Travolta. Tom Cruise is not the only famous celebrity involved in weird science. Danny Zuko himself is a man who loves to read. In fact, he will tell you to do the same thing if you ask him why he's involved with the Church of Science. That's it, no explanation or what is in the book he's recommending. Just go find one and read one. Read a book! I picked Harry Potter. John is well known to have confirmed his involvement with the crew, but there is specifically one really unsettling thing about him, and is that he seems like an okay guy. But as I said, every time someone asks him about what it means, he tells people to educate themselves and read a book. I found so many examples of celebrities all giving the exact same answer when they're asked this question, and it's horrifying. There is no straight answer. It's very weird. They tell you to go to a library. That's pretty sus. Number six, Jada Pinkett Smith. For those who don't know, Jada lives in a world of science, but she... I can't even talk about what that means. Oh wait, <laughs> you'll know what it means. Leah Romini, who you might know from King of Queens or Old School or just all the movies that she's in, is very outspoken, especially against Jada. The rumors that Will and Jada were big into science was something that Leah mentions in her book, Troublemaker, Surviving Hollywood and Weird Science, and she brought it up again when speaking to the Daily Beast in 2017. She claims to know for certain that Jada was involved for a long time. She had seen Will once in a blue moon, however, she did spot Jada attending several events at the Celebrity Center in Hollywood. When Leah claimed to have knowledge of this, Jada clapped back on Twitter, naming all of the houses of worship that she's visited without being an actual member of them. A year later, they appeared on Red Table Talk together to hash things out, and after the interview, Jada gushed about how they connected in the interview and said that they were two broken little babies inside of them that just were abandoned by their parents. And Leah was like, man, that lady needs help. Number five, Giovanni Ribisi. Giovanni Ribisi, best known for his more comedic roles in movies like Ted, is another celebrity that is openly linked to the world of science being another celebrity that encourages people to read a book and educate themselves instead of him having to explain the unexplainable. Gio actually used to practice Scientology alongside his co-star from My Name is Earl, Jason Lee, aka Earl Hickey, who you will know from plenty of great movies. Himself and Leah had butted heads for years, but back in 2016, the release of her book prompted an even greater hatred. These two have been at each other's throats ever since. Metaphorically speaking, it would be pretty weird if every time you went outside there was just Leah Romini and Giovanni Ribisi brawling on the streets. You can sell tickets to that. Gio is not the most famous person in this book to be exposed, but he is mentioned, so he counts. Number four, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Maggie and Leah used to be very close when Leah was a former member of the Weird Science, but she has had a massive falling out with the group ever since. The controversy led to several altercations and rifts and friendships. Following her exit from the church, Maggie and Leah continued to argue and battle with each other as to what the superior decision was. The better place to be for Leah was behind a desk typing her feelings into a book. I've never read this book, so if you have 
good for you. I barely had enough mental capacity to read the articles about this lady, let alone her actual words and thoughts. Maggie is just another celebrity that wishes Leah would stop telling so-called lies and misleading the public into thinking that the group are a bunch of famous nuts who play hide and seek together from time to time. Uh, guys, Leah didn't make you look like that. You made you look like that. Number three, Elizabeth Moss. Star of the popular series Handmaid's Tale is another celebrity involved in the church, and this video is quite literally just a list of people involved in weird science that Leah Romina either has a beef with or has some kind of feud. Elizabeth and Leah have actually only crossed paths a handful of times, but each seems to be worse than the last. Leah is blasted by any and all celebrities linked to weird science, with Elizabeth just being one of the more shy of the bunch. Herself and Leah have been fairly reserved in their feud, with the only knowledge of its existence coming from Leah herself. A few years back, Elizabeth shared some of her views on the science side of things, and her words caused Leah to label the crew as a cult, and that their sole goal was to grow their numbers. Leah tore Elizabeth and her statements apart, causing a back and forth that lasts to this day. The argument is literally just the two going back and forth, claiming that the other is the reason for their annoyance. We've all been there. Number two, Kirsty Alley. If there has ever been a difficult clip to watch on this list, this is the one. Leah Romini writes a lot about the celebrities she knows to be involved with the group, including Kirstie Alley. Kirstie is best known for her role on Cheers and in movies like It Takes Two. But if you are a fan of cringy clips, you might know her best from her season on Celebrity Big Brother. During her time on that show, she was asked about her beliefs a few times, but the best clip comes from her interaction with fellow castmate from that season, Rodrigo Alves. She tells her that the best way to educate herself is to read a book. Hey, hey, I already said that before. But unlike TV hosts and interviewers in the past, she pushed further, telling Kirsty that she is right there, ready to go, so you could just explain what would be in the book, right? To which Christy said no. Rodrigo had her own set of issues on that season, but this moment really stuck into the minds of those who witnessed it. Like, why not? Why do I have to go read a whole book that you have already read? That'd be like going to a doctor's office and them being like, oh, I know what's wrong with you, but you have to read my medical school journals to figure it out. And at number one, Dancing with the Stars. A few years back, Leah was asked to be a guest dancer on Dancing with the Stars. And as the season progressed, more and more backlash came up, mainly from the science community voicing their annoyance that she was fine to be on a show and dance her heart out, but other active and vocal members like Tom Cruise and John Travolta or anyone else who was on this list are questioned at every turn. Leah responded to the hate by informing people that the show that she was on had nothing to do with her views and was simply something fun that she wanted to participate in and she was asked to do it. So this might have been part of the reason that she left the group for good and every time she tried to exist outside of it, she was just questioned and brought right back in. In at number 10, Paris Hilton's boarding school. In 2020, Paris Hilton Hilton open up about her traumatic childhood after keeping it a secret for most of her life. In her documentary, This Is Paris, Hilton alleged that she'd been subjected to toxic and harmful treatment while attending Pogo Canyon School in Utah, which was a boarding school for troubled teens. Hilton revealed that while she was there, she would be isolated in solitary confinement for no reason and be forced to take pills that made her feel numb. Paris and her entire family kept this a secret for her entire time that Paris was a socialite and an A-list star. Along with her difficult childhood, Paris also exposed that her voice was faked and she made it sound higher to play into the dumb blonde stereotype. And then number nine, Joan Crawford. Back in old Hollywood, they didn't have the beauty products that we have today, and actors were forced to use alternative measures to look their best on camera. Actress Joan Crawford took this to the extreme and admitted to soaking her eyes in boric acid every week to make them, quote, sparkle on camera. She exposed this years later in her autobiography called My Way of Life. When talking about this beauty regimen, Crawford said once a week she'd steam her face, apply a mask, and soak her eyes in boric acid casually instructing, quote, while the mask is working, place pads soaked in witch hazel and boric acid over your eyelids and put on your favorite music. Obviously, this was an extremely bad idea that could have made her go blind, but she risked it all just to look better. And at number eight, the black box. We are just now scratching the surface
surface of the horrific things that child actors had to endure in the days of old Hollywood. Sadly, one of the punishments adults on set would use when a child actor misbehaved was putting them in a thing called a black box. This was a closed in box where the actor was forced to sit on an actual block of ice as punishment. Shirley Temple spoke of this box in her autobiography and called it an exploitation of her childish innocence. In her book, she said that if any child on the set of Baby Burlesque misbehaved, they were locked in a windowless sound booth dubbed the punishment box, where they'd be forced to sit on a block of ice. Temple was sent to the box several times in her tenure as a child star. Temple added, quote, far as I can tell, the black box did no lasting damage on my psyche. Its lesson of life, however, was profound and unforgettable. Time is money. Wasted time means wasted money means trouble. And at number seven, Jackie Cooper. Stories like this are so horrible, I truly hope this is still not happening today. Actor Jackie Cooper shared a terrible memory of when he was working on set. While he was filming the movie Skippy, Cooper was not able to make himself cry. So the director, who happened to be his uncle, threatened to kill his dog if he didn't cry. Norman Turog, the uncle and director, left lasting trauma on Cooper. In his autobiography, Cooper said about the situation, quote, I began sobbing so hysterically that it was almost too much for the scene. Turog had to quiet me down by saying perhaps my dog had survived the shot, that if I hurried and calmed down a little and did the scene the way he wanted, we would go see if my dog was still alive. Cooper ended up earning the nomination for best actor in a leading role for his performance in 1931. He was just nine years old, and he's still the youngest nominee ever for the award. And at number six, morality clauses. Back in the day, the studios basically owned the actors that they signed, and they made them sign their life away. Once they became an actor for a major studio, the actor totally belonged to them and was not able to make major life decisions without consulting executives. Many of these clauses forced female actors to stay unmarried, so they were more marketable to men. Others even forced women to terminate their pregnancies, so they would not waste any time that could be spent filming. The studios claimed that these clauses were to, quote, prevent stars from destroying their value through scandal. Stars like Lana Turner, Judy Garland, and Jeanette McDonald were all held to these clauses and they would disguise the hospital visits and claim they were for ear infections or other minor treatments. Halfway number five, closeted LGBT plus actors. To continue along the lines of morality clauses, another use of those clauses were to closet LGBT plus actors, even forcing some of them into sham marriages just to keep up appearances. This part of the clause revolved around not, quote, forfeiting the respect of the public. Public. If the actor breached this part of the contract and had a relationship that was not approved, they would risk losing their entire salary for the role. Also, if the actor was outed, that would mean the end of their career either way. Gay actor Rock Hudson's struggle with his identity was revealed in the biography All That Heaven Allows. In that book, it was exposed that a magazine planned to out him back in the day. At that time, Hudson's agent was the only person who knew the truth and proposed that he get married to squash the story. Hudson immediately married Phyllis Gates, but they divorced a couple years later. The secret stayed with him until days before he passed away. And at number four, Buddy Epson. Back in the days of old Hollywood, the makeup and prosthetics weren't what they are today. And oftentimes the costumes that the actors would wear would be toxic. One fact is that the Wicked Witch's green face in The Wizard of Oz was made with toxic paint. And Buddy Epson, who was supposed to play the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, did not do so because he had an extreme reaction to the aluminum dust from the makeup. Because of this reaction, he was replaced in the movie with actor Jack Haley. Epson was ultimately hospitalized in force out of Oz's production. For years after the movie, Epson claimed that the makeup caused permanent breathing problems for the rest of his life. And at number three, Jack Nicholson's sister was his mother. This one isn't really related to Hollywood, more so a secret that a Hollywood actor kept for a number of years. Jack Nicholson kept a huge secret from the public almost his entire life, mostly because he didn't know the truth until he was an adult. His entire life, Jack was raised with a sister named June, who was 17 years older than him. But when his parents died, Jack's older sister revealed that Jack was actually her child and her parents raised him as their own to hide the stigma from a young pregnancy. And Jack's parents were actually his grandparents the whole time. And at number two, Rihanna's father had a second life. Rihanna has spoken in the past about her tense relationship with her father. Throughout her life, he was addicted to alcohol and cheated on her mother essentially their whole marriage. But one day a horrible secret was revealed and apparently the entire time he was married, Rihanna's father had a second family. He had three other children as well, two daughters and a son. At one point, Rihanna was even forced to sue her father because he was selling services involving her name and likeness, although she later dropped that suit. And finally, number one, hidden children. Being a movie star means that you need to be perfect 24 seven. That includes hiding pregnancies from the public or trying to make them go away. Celebrities like Kylie Jenner kept her pregnancy totally a secret until after the birth to ensure the media did not affect her. However, there are tons of celebrities who completely hid secret love children from the public. Aerosmith's front
frontman Steven Tyler had a secret child while in his heyday, so he and the mother decided to hide the paternity from the child. When Liv Tyler was eight, she found out the truth and so did the media. Apparently she was forced to put the pieces of the puzzle together herself when she could no longer ignore the resemblance she had to the singer and his other kid. Starting off at number 10, we have Travis Scott and Rihanna. Many people don't know about this couple, because the time they spent together was kept very secret. Obviously before Travis started dating Kylie Jenner. Although the pair were seen out a few times, neither party confirmed that they were actually seeing each other. The only confirmation we got that they actually dated was from inside sources. The relationship was first exposed on an episode of the Throwing Fits podcast. Then journalist Jonah Wiener shared more about the relationship with Complex. Wiener said, quote, I broke the news about him and Brianna, which they told me not to do. It's not because he's like, don't tell anyone I'm smashing Brianna. It's because Brianna's like, don't tell anyone I'm smashing Travis Scott, please. Adding it's obviously embarrassing as hell. And if this is true that she was embarrassed of him, I respect Rihanna even more than I did before. In at number nine, Tom Ackerley and Margot Robbie. Since Margot Robbie is known for playing the love interest in most of her movies, it's a shock to learn that she's been married this whole time, but intentionally kept it a secret. Some speculate that her management has forced her to appear single, so her married status would not affect her work. Robbie and Ackerley were roommates before they dated and eventually married in a surprise ceremony in 2016. And it's near impossible to find a photo of them together on her Instagram or on the red carpet. Usually Robbie attends red carpets alone. In April of 2019, Robbie posted a rare photo of the couple on vacay in Finland. And in at number 8, Daniel Craig and Rachel Wiez. This high-powered couple is another that is incredibly secretive. According to Metro, the couple first met in college and were friends for years, but it wasn't until they starred in the 2011 movie Dream House together that they actually started dating. Not only has the relationship been a secret, but so has the marriage. Apparently, the two got married in 2011 in a secret ceremony that was attended by just four people. They have been quietly together ever since and even started a family together. They now share a child together that was born in 2018. The pair are so secret that they don't even attend a lot of public events together, but it works for them. We has told the New York Times, quote, Daniel and I are really similar. We're just really crap at talking about our private lives. It seems that the pair also believe it's not a good idea to speak about their relationship to the public. In at number seven, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Beyonce and Jay-Z's relationship is happily out in the public now, although the details on what goes on behind closed doors is still very secretive. Although you might not know that the couple kept their relationship hidden during the first few years that they were together. According to People Magazine, they initially started dating around 2000, but the media didn't learn about their romance until 2004 when they went to the MTV VMAs together. Even when they started appearing out in public together, their relationship was still private. The couple later got married during a secret ceremony in 2008 that nobody knew about for months. The only time we really see the couple together is during rare interviews or when either of them releases a documentary. In at number 6, Matthew Perry and Lizzie Kaplan. This couple kept their relationship so well hidden that nobody knew that they were even together until long after they split. That's even more impressive because they dated for a whopping 6 years. It was reported that after six years of being together, they split in 2012. They kept their breakup secret for over a year before it was even announced. Sources said after the split that the two did not agree on their long-term goals. Kaplan wanted to get married, but Perry was not interested. The source added, quote, The last year that they were together, it was very up and down, a lot of back and forth. It was hard for them to let go, but ultimately Lizzie decided she wanted more. The source didn't know if Perry was against marriage altogether or if he just not want to get married to Lizzie. Halfway number five, Shailene Woodley and Aaron Rodgers. This couple silently got together in 2020 and fans were shocked to learn about the unlikely couple. The pair was rumored together during the pandemic, but they kept it out of the public eye until February 2021 when Rodgers thanked his fiance during a speech. While on stage with the NFL Honors Award show, he said, quote, 2020 was definitely a crazy year full of lots of change, growth, some amazing memorable moments. 180 straight days of having my nose hair scraped, playing for very little fans or no stands the entire season. I got engaged and I played some of the best football in my career. Weeks later, when Woodley went on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, she confirmed their engagement and showed off her engagement ring. Sources have revealed that the pair are not traditional and will be keeping it very under wraps. One source added, quote, they have a very different non-traditional relationship. Shailene and Aaron are still together, it's not odd, and they don't post about each other on their birthdays in that sense, and are very private about things. And at number four, Nicole Kidman and Lenny Kravitz. 
Nicole Kidman and Lenny Kravitz are most likely a couple the public would never think of. But these two did date, and even more shocking, they were so serious about the relationship they were even engaged at one point. They got together in the early 2000s and were photographed out and about, but never confirmed any details about their relationship. Until 2017 when Kidman revealed during an interview that they were engaged. When Kidman was speaking about her castmates on Big Little Lies, she said, quote, Well, I knew Zoe because I was engaged to her father. She said of working with Zoe Kravitz. Quote, it's all in the family. I love Lenny. He's a great guy. And at number three, Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah. Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah dating is not a shock at all to me. They star in a lot of comedies together and their personalities seem really similar. But what is shocking is that they kept their relationship totally secret while they were together. After filming Scott Pilgrim vs. The World together, Aubrey Plaza and Michael Sarah started seeing each other officially. But they didn't tell the world until after they had broken up. In a 2016 episode of RuPaul's podcast, What's the Tea, Plaza revealed that they dated for more than a year, saying, quote, we love each other and we're just really good friends. He's just a weird little freak and we speak the same language. In at number two, Cory Booker and Rosario Dawson. New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker and actress Rosario Dawson started dating while Booker was campaigning for the presidency in 2019. The rumors that they were dating first started when they were seen out at a performance of Broadway's Dear Evan Hansen together. Then a few months later in March, Dawson confirmed the relationship to TMZ. She said, quote, I'm just grateful to be with someone that I respect and love and admire so much. The pair are still very low key and do not share details about their relationship. But Dawson has been spotted at a rally supporting Booker and has made a few appearances on her social media profiles, along with attending some of her movie premieres. And finally, at number one, Zach Braff and Florence Pugh. This couple has kept their relationship pretty secret due to their controversial age gap. The couple who share a 21 year age gap met on the set of a 2019 short film that he directed called In the Time It Takes to Get There. They have never walked on a red carpet and are rarely seen on each other's Instagram. This is because the first time Braff appeared on Pew's Instagram, the post was flooded with hate comments regarding their age gap. The comments were later deactivated on the April of 2020 post, and Pew later shared a video statement concerning the backlash. In the nearly four minute video, she shared that she was forced to turn off the comments on her post, showing Braff because 70% of the comments were hurling hate. She shared that she is a 24 year old grown woman and she can make her own decisions about who she chooses to be with. She added that it is nobody's place to talk badly about a relationship that does not affect them. And if people cannot hold their tongues, they should just unfollow her. Number 10, Justin Timberlake. One of the most discussed sections of The Woman in Me, a memoir by Britney Spears, is of course a revelation on what really happened while she was dating her Mickey Mouse Club co-star, Justin Timberlake. After meeting JT in the clubhouse, the two sparked a romantic connection, and their connection was strong, but unfortunately, Britney had to make a terrible decision in the year 2000 when she found out she was pregnant. And at first, she was very excited about the whole thing because she wanted to be a parent. In her book, she revealed that she had planned on starting a family with Justin, but I guess it was just gonna be a little bit earlier than she expected. Well, it turns out Justin, not so excited, and told her that they were both too young to start a family, continuing to remind her that their careers would also need to be put on pause. This revelation may be part of the reason that Justin reportedly was so nervous leading up to the book's release, and since the book's release, he's had to turn off his Instagram notifications because, hey, he's terrible and people wanna let him know. Brittany revealed that if the decision had solely been left to her, she would've gone through with the pregnancy, but she decided to go the opposite route instead. She claims that she only did this because Justin clearly didn't want to be the dad, and in the book she said that looking back, it was one of the most agonizing things she had ever experienced in her life. Number nine, Jamie Foxx. So this is one of the more recent secrets that's been revealed, so to speak. Uh, so far, this is just an allegation, but a woman is suing Jamie Foxx for alleged physical mistreatment at a rooftop restaurant. The allegations are being backed up by a two eyewitnesses, a friend of the victim, and a security guard who saw the whole thing go down and let it happen. According to the unnamed woman, she spotted Jamie at a restaurant around 11 p.m. and after a couple of hours, decided to ask him for a picture. Jamie was apparently under the influence and according to the accuser, he became very handsy as the night progressed. He said yes to the picture and then apparently said that the woman had a model's body and smelled good. Then there are some darker and honestly pretty disturbing details that I can't go into in this channel, but if they're true, something tells me Jamie's career may be done. Truly just dark stuff. The court case is being brought forward as the Survivors Act is about to be implemented in the US. This act allows victims of physical offenses to bring civil cases to court after the statute of limitations has expired. The statute means that after a certain amount of time has passed, the victim can no longer file criminal charges. However, the new act means that civil cases are good to go. So we will see what happens to Jamie in the coming weeks. Number eight, 
Lizzo. Lizzo may have been a public advocate for body positivity, but as part of the lawsuit being brought up against her, it looks like all that positivity may have just been an act that she was putting on to make herself more universally loved. Now, I'm not a small man. In fact, I have what many call a dad bod, and I'm very cool with it. So I'm not dismissing the notion that we should love and respect ourselves, but come on, she made it a massive part of her personality on camera when it sounds like the only body she actually cared about was her own. According to her dancers, Lizzo regularly shames her team and makes them feel that they are too large or gaining weight, with several dancers confirming these claims. One of the dancers, Crystal Davies, who is part of this lawsuit, was fired for secretly recording a meeting between herself and Lizzo. The meeting was about the dancer's performance on stage recently and her apparently disliking the weight that she had been gaining, claiming that she wasn't committing to the role. She was also bringing her dancers to weird places and making them do weird things. Lizzo was at a club in Amsterdam's Red Light District when she coerced, aka forced a dancer to touch a woman's bare chest despite saying no several times. She also made them eat bananas from some no-no zones. Again, nobody's idea of fun. Currently, there is still a court case up in the air and no one knows what will happen, but so far Lizzo is maintaining that she did nothing and will prove her innocence. Number seven, Russell Brand. Even before the controversy surrounding Russell Brand came up this year, this dude was unwelcome everywhere. Royal events, awards shows, kids' birthday parties, who knows? For anyone who doesn't know, I'm really sorry to be the one to tell you, but Russell Brand is a terrible person. The man known best as a comedian, a bringer of joy, was secretly manipulative, aggressive, and at times violent with his ex-partners. Following in the news that a documentary about his life and career was set to release on BBC's Channel 4, several complaints got filed against him, alleging mistreatment during their time together. The allegations were actually reinforced by Russell's ex, Katy Perry, who they dated for quite some time, and she came to learn that Russell was short-tempered, opinionated, and stubborn. Russell's career was canceled, and he's currently awaiting a trial. Number six, Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors is currently the man behind Kang the Conqueror in the MCU. He was written as an important person in that franchise, being a villain in a couple of movies, and recently a villain in the Loki TV show. Unfortunately for Jonathan Majors, an ex has come forward and alleged that Jonathan was physically violent towards her while they were together. Since March of this year, Majors and his team had been adamant that the situation was blown out of proportions and that there really is nothing to be upset about, which is always a fun thing to say to people during these situations. In fact, in June, Majors filed his own cross-complaint accusing his accuser. The prosecutors refuted these claims and told him they had no plans on prosecuting Grace Jafari, who was the woman who accused him. Majors has been dropped from his agency, and so far, his role on TV and film is pretty up in the air. I mean, his character Kang may even be kicked out of the MCU and replaced by Doctor Doom, so let's see what happens as the year progresses. Number five, Jada Pinkett Smith. Cheating rumors and dating scandals followed Jada and Will throughout their entire relationship. Since day one, people were convinced that they were in an open relationship or had just been straight up cheating on each other. Turns out that those rumors were kind of true, because ahead of the release of her book Worthy, Jada sat down with People Magazine and every other news outlet to share some inside info. The most revealing one was that herself and Will Smith were actually separated for seven years. Of course, that's not all though. Jada is slowly ruining that guy's life and then some. When Jada revealed the truth about her separation from Will, she claimed that by the time they reached 2016, they just became exhausted with each other. The news of their separation was a mild shock at best because Super Sleuth fans claim that they had proof Will and Jada were separated a long time ago. Some of the clips that were submitted as evidence of Will and Jada disprove it because Will and Jada was on Red Table Talk and he looks drained. He just looks like a man dealing with so much mentally speaking. In her conversation with Will, she literally says that herself and Will had basically broken up, but instead of just outright admitting the information, she decided to hold on to it until the release of her book. A lot of Jada fans commented on the resurfaced clips, and we can all agree just Will is having a rough time, and I, I just feel for this guy at this point. I could go on and on about how terrible Jada Pinkett Smith is, but I've only got a couple of minutes, and I already wrote a lot of lists about why she's bad, so go check him out. Number four, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch hit the rap scene in 1991. Despite sounding like the title of a cheesy kids cartoon, the crew had a small following and garnered quite a bit of success. Enough for leading man Mark Wahlberg to be spotted, picked up by Hollywood to star in The Corrupter, a 1999 action flick that sees Mark play the leading man, Danny Wallace, a police officer who attempts to stop substance trafficking and corruption by the Chinese triads. He had a successful acting career that's recently been declining in quality, but he's still acting and he looks great at 52, so please don't 
Don't Hurt Me, Mark Wahlberg. Growing up in Boston, he was the youngest of nine children and was relentlessly bullied by his fellow siblings. His parents divorced when he was very young and he became addicted to No No Snow by the time he was 13. He dropped out of high school and was eventually arrested at the age of 18 for attempting to slay two Vietnamese men. Apparently, he was walking home late one night under the influence of hallucinogens when he spotted the men. Close friends at the time confirmed that Mark did have a bit of a racial bias with his upbringing, which caused him to be instantly aggressive towards anyone who, you know, wasn't white. He attempted to swing a large log at them, which made contact and knocked one of them unconscious. He was eventually released after serving only 45 days of a two-year prison sentence, and he vowed to change his life forever. So far, that promise seems to be kept, and I can personally confirm that he's a very polite and patient person because he watched a movie at a theater I used to work at. He travels with like five people at all times. It's a little intimidating. Number three, Margot Robbie. Margot may be a perfect Barbie on screen, but apparently behind the scenes, she may be a psycho. In a recent interview with BBC Radio 1, Margot reminisced about a little prank she pulled on an old babysitter. It involved kitchen cutters, which is the word I'm forced to use for no See, they bleep it out. Apparently, Margot has just gotten a new babysitter, a much older woman that just was not as cool as Talia, her old babysitter. So she hatched a plan of sweet, sweet revenge. After a particularly trying day where Margot refused to take a bath, she decided to kick the old lady out for good and grabbed ketchup, a stabby jabby device, and laid face down on the kitchen tiles. You know, the old I'm kind of dead routine. As you may expect, her babysitter walked in, took one look, screamed, and just jogged out the door. She was gone. She traumatized the woman who quit, and Margot successfully got her old babysitter back. But that's very messed up, and Margot was so young when she did that. That is so dark. A dark place for someone's mind to go that early on. Was she secretly a little crazy this whole time? Might explain why she is the best Harley Quinn we've ever seen on screen. Number two, Tim Allen. Tim Allen is the voice of Buzz Lightyear, the star of ABC's popular sitcom Home Improvement, which premiered in 1991. And while he may have played a family man on TV, a lot of fans may not know that Tim was a smuggler of no-no snow in the early 1970s. According to Tim, he got mixed up with some pretty bad people back in the day while he was selling certain substances on the street for a couple of bucks. In 1978, Tim was arrested in the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport and was caught with more than 650 grams 1.4 pounds of no-no snow. Unfortunately for Tim, state legislators had just passed a law that tied a life sentence to any conviction of selling 650 grams or more. Like there was a guy from the government just next to his car like, oh, 650, all right, well, if you got 650, then you're going to jail. However, that sentence was never served and it was revealed that Tim was set up by an undercover police officer who had been following him for months. Due to this and Tim's cooperation in providing the names of fellow dealers to the authorities, it led to him receiving a lighter conviction that allowed him to be sentenced in a federal court instead of a state one, so he was able to ignore that new policy. His information led to 20 arrests and the sentencing of a major dealer. So think about this entire entry and tell me that wouldn't be a great movie. Number one, Danny Matheson. Danny Matheson was that 70s show's popular boy and it helped launch several careers, including Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher, and of course himself. Danny was also on this show and it turns out the allegations against him date back to 2004 and were reported in 2004. Danny was still on the show when an investigation took place. Four women reported that he had mistreated them physically, prompting local law enforcement to halt production of that 70s show and bring Danny in for questioning. The investigation brought little to no actual evidence to the table because it was just that time, so Danny was let go and the whole thing was forgotten about. But that means that Ashton and Mila watched this dude shut down their project and still said, hey, he's a great guy. When the charges come up again 15 years later, people are still sticking to his side that he was friends with, but it turns out that he was an actual menace and a horrible person and he's gonna go to jail. Thankfully in 2023 it's a lot easier to confirm allegations like this and he was recently sentenced to three years in prison.